thank you for joining the Value Chain TV News Update. I am Chad Moses with the news. And on the news update, President Bola Tinubu has mandated a comprehensive census for schools to identify problem areas and facilitate appropriate planning. The decision, which was reached by the president, is anticipated to provide information about all Nigerian schools ranging from elementary to university, including their current state, living facilities, closeness to one another and infrastructure. Value Chain TV spoke to some Nigerians regarding this development. The report. The move is okay because he, it's like he's feeling the pain of Nigerians. You know, for me, it's not about education. It's about system and structure in a country that have all the human and material resources that God has given to us. And we are not utilizing it. In any organization, country, family, without system and structure, it can never be sustainable. So a system and structure should be established where every dick and thumb can follow it. Okay? Why are our children, our young ones, Japan, going abroad? Because there is system, there is structure. They are creating minded individuals who came together, put their resources together. They enable individuals to achieve their dream. So there is equal opportunity created. And that is what we need in the country. Yeah, it's, an, it's a very nice idea. First and foremost, I think it's a welcoming idea since it's a new government. There are certain things that need to be done and those things need to be carried out, basically. If the president wants to check or validate issues that are surrounding the educational sector. This is a very welcoming idea. And I think since the president wants to effect change in the educational sector, there's a very good reason for him and the minister as well to check every valid thing concerning the educational sector and add value to whatever is being uh, uh, received. The House of Representatives Committee on Power has declared its opposition against the recent proposal by the Nigerian Electricity Regulatory Commission, NERC, to increase electricity tariffs. Chairman of the Commission, Victor Ngokolo, emphasized the need to address the concerns raised by stakeholders, particularly the impact on consumers, categorized under various tariff bans. This is coming after the NERC chairman, Sanusi Garba, outlined the financial implications, asserting that the federal government would need to allocate a substantial subsidy of 3.2 trillion naira in 2024 to reverse the tariff hike. Garba conveyed this message during a stakeholders gathering conveyed by the House of Representatives Committee on Power at the National Assembly Complex in Abuja emphasizing the inadequacy of current investment in ensuring consistent electricity supply. Minister of State for Petroleum Resources, Oil, Senator Henikin Lopobiri, and Chief of Defense Staff, CDS, General Christova Musa, have reaffirmed their commitment to curb pipeline vandalism and crude oil theft in the country. The minister noted that the drive to increase production will not only lead to increased revenue for Nigeria, but will also address the forex challenge and boost the economy. Lekwobiri spoke when General Musa led a military delegation to visit its office in Abuja, where he stated that crude oil, being Nigeria's economic mainstay, deserves all the military support it needs. Moving on to power generation, the World Bank Group, WBG, and the African Development Bank Group, AFDB, have announced their partnership to provide at least 300 million people in Africa with electricity access by 2030. The initiative is to reduce the number of people in Africa living without access to power. In the details of the deal, the World Bank Group will work to connect 250 million people to electricity through distributed renewable energy systems or the distribution grid, while the African Development Bank Group will support an additional 50 million people. The Securities and Exchange Commission has kicked against admitting illicit funds into the capital market through the fresh banking recapitalization exercise. This was revealed by the Executive Director of Operations of the Commission, Dayo Obisan, at a symposium organized by the Association of Capital Market Academics of Nigeria. 
Obisan revealed that the Commission had a positive outlook on the banking sector recapitalization exercise and was motivated to work with stakeholders to achieve a smooth process. Data released by the Debt Management Office, DMO in Abuja, has shown that Nigeria's public debt stock has hit 97.341 trillion naira as of December 31st, 2023. The DMO said the amount comprised both domestic and external debt stocks of the federal government, the 36 state governments, and the Federal Capital Territory, FCT. The debt office said there was an increase of about 9.43 trillion naira over the comparative figure for September 2023 due to the new domestic borrowing by the federal government to finance the deficit in the 2024 budget and disbursements by the multilateral and bilateral lenders. Value Chain TV asked some Nigerians their thoughts on this. The report. What I have issue with is what they spend those money on. For instance, we have countries like uh, United States of America and their debt is in trillions of dollars. So if a, if a growing economy like Nigeria is taking loans and uh, probably uh, spending it on uh, things that can bring prosperity like infrastructure, like uh, uh, helping SME, local small small business, that can actually grow the economy. So I don't have issue with debts like that. But borrowing money, then politicians looting it, squandering it, that's the only thing that I have issue with. I feel when a government is handing over power to another government, then there should be a record of how much has been borrowed, what are these money even used for? That's the main question that everybody is asking. What are these money used for? And do we continue borrowing? I think if a government borrows money, it should be spent on capital projects or for purposes of having the money to make profit or to yield itself. I think when you borrow money as an individual, you borrow, you do business, you make profit, you make do with your profit until you are able to pay back and whatever you have becomes a capital for you to keep running your business so i think as a nation that's what should be done so borrowing more money i don't think if you are borrowing money it should be to produce what we will consume that's just my own say about that officials of the federal competition and consumer protection commission FCCPC have sealed off the four U supermarkets at Ademola Ade Tokumbo Crescent, Use 2, Abuja, for concealing bags of rice filled with weevils, expired drugs, drinks, and products. The seal off was followed by an alleged deception by the management of the supermarket to hide the affected rice at its headquarters. Some of the staff of the supermarket were caught pulling off the expired dates of some of the products in the supermarket. The affected products are 5 kg and 10 kg of cap rice and royal stallion rice, which were produced in August 2022 and October 2022, respectively. They are expected to expire in 2027. And moving on to this week's news commentary. Few hours after a high court in Lokoja, the Kogi State Capital restrained the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC, from arresting, detaining and prosecuting ex-Kogi State Governor, Yahaya Bello. The commission has declared him wanted for an alleged financial crime to the tune of 80.2 billion naira. The declaration is the latest in the tussle between the former governor and the anti-crime agency, as it has also accused the governor of Kogi State, Usman Ododo, of taking Bello in his official car to avoid the arrest. In this news commentary, Kabil Lawal offers an insight on the issue. The report. The hunt for Governor Bello is coming about three months after he handed over to his party man, Usman Ododo, ending an eight-year stint that began on January 27, 2016. The tussle between Bello and EFCC has triggered the issuance of conflicting orders by the various courts of law. Justice I.A. Jamil of the Kogi State High Court in Lokoja had on Wednesday restrained the EFCC from arresting, detaining or prosecuting the former governor. However, following up the probe, 
EFCC sought was granted permission by the Federal High Court in Abuja to arrest Bello ahead of his appearance in court on Thursday. The chieftain of the ruling All Progressive Congress APC was absent earlier in the day at the Federal High Court in Abuja for a suit instituted against him by the EFCC. This forced Justice Emeka Nwete to adjourn the suit as for substituted service and possible trial of Bello for alleged money laundering. In the face of heated battle, Bello's media office accused the anti-corruption agency of a witch hunt against its principal. However, reacting to issue, the Coalition of Anti-Corruption Civil Society Organizations urged EFCC to ensure strict compliance with the law in handling the alleged corruption charges against the former governor. Also, the executive chairman of the Center for Anti-Corruption and Open Leadership, Kakul, Mr. Debo Adeniro, said the public face-off between the EFCC and the former governor in Abuja was both unnecessary and unfortunate. Adeniro pointed out that a court of coordinate jurisdiction could not assume superiority over another. Meanwhile, in an exclusive interview with Valuchen TV, a legal practitioner, Pius Ufwile, opined that according to law, since the Abuja Federal High Court was the first to issue an arrest warrant to former governor, it is expected that he reports to the Federal High Court before going to Kogi State High Court. Many have also observed with grave concern how the tussle has created a possible threat from the resistance to arrest by Bello and how current governor provided the cover for him to escape arrest warrant. To this end, Nigerians lay in wait to see the outcome of development. For Valu Chen TV, Kabir Lawal reported. And that's it on the news update. I remain Chat Moses. Thanks for watching.